What is up everyone it's Saber here and welcome to another Naruto what if if you end up liking the video please consider subscribing it's free and you can take it back at any time and it really helps me out and this is my main channel so if you're interested in what if Naruto had Madara and the QB sealed inside of him or what if Naruto was a low born in Westeros and became king go check out my main channel. And if you're interested in what if Naruto was a assassin in Westeros, or what if Naruto was the long lost heir to Whirlpool go check out my third channel, and with all of the YouTube formalities out of the way let's get into it. Miyuki smiled looking at Naruto she'd seen him a bit sad in a few occasions, but she'd never seen him this sad what he usually wore was a smile or just a flat out blank look on his face, but this was a new look on his face that made him more of a human being than anything he was standing in front of her door at her quarters within the palace at the wind capital he looked pretty miserable. And she could only guess he was here for comfort Miyuki felt oddly happy about it no there wasn't anything odd. About her happiness it was normal that she feel that way the last time she saw him he'd put his hand over her neck his face twisted and now this this made things a lot easier for her to deal no matter what happens she will always reflect on this she will always know that Naruto is a person and has a heart just like her seeing him miserable didn't particularly excite her no there was no good reason to be happy about that perhaps a sadist would be happy over something like that but she wasn't. Such a person what made her happy was the fact that he came here to her to speak to her in such a situation he obviously highly rates her comfort hence his presence here such a thought nearly made her squeal in delight it was already night she could guess he wasn't able to sleep that well come in Naruto she said smiling the blonde entered without saying a word Miyuki closed the door behind her and leaned a little for a second she released a breath she didn't even know she was holding the daimyo. Then followed Naruto towards her sitting room sorry to spring out on you like this Naruto said smiling a bit Miyuki could very well tell that the smile was forced I couldn't think of anywhere to go he said Yuzushi Ogakure didn't give him any positives to think off it only reminded him of all fellow clansmen he'd lost or his mother had lost when the village was invaded years ago as far as he knew he was alone. In this world there was no Uzumaki around and that just made him sad he didn't even think. Of returning to his house in Kanoha that place would only remind him that with Itachi out of commission he had no one to fully rely on it would remind him that his parents were dead and he couldn't turn to them when things had turned out bad he wasn't able to call upon his mother for comfort when he needed it he couldn't call upon his father for one of those comforting talks when he wanted one Miyuki. Despite not being a shinobi she was much involved in the shinobi world due to her position as Daimyo she could understand him she could understand what he was feeling neither Jiraiya nor Sanade could offer him the same comfort and warmth as she could and does hence his presence here Miyuki merely smiled and waved her right hand dismissively at his apology she sat down at a large couch and looked back at Naruto who was still standing don't worry about it she said she patted her lap and spoke come here she said to Naruto the blonde hesitated for a few moments before he finally gave an E spread most of his body on the couch and lied down on the left side his head rested comfortably on Miyuki's lap and silence settled down as the woman patted him on the head what is wrong Naruto Miyuki asked in a soft tone that was filled with nothing but warmth I find myself questioning whether I am truly worthy to call myself a peace loving man I killed men in a bad way and I shouldn't have killed them I should have just knocked them out my actions will worsen the situation between Kanoha and IWA my goal is to be the bridge that connects those who aren't connected but what am I doing by becoming a stumbling block to my own dream I feel dirty no different from a murderer it doesn't matter what my reasons are but I killed people in a brutal way when I killed bandits I didn't feel worse perhaps it was because those were evil people who live for nothing but to harm others what of those I recently killed though they aren't like bandits they are just shinobi fulfilling their orders yet I killed them I wonder if my decisions were wrong and my definition of right and wrong isn't something that relates to justice I wonder if my training wasn't enough to prepare me for this journey Miyuki listened carefully a sad smile formed on her face she wanted to do nothing but to hold him close to her chest however their current position didn't allow her to do something like that she stopped patting him and held both his hands filling them with warmth I can't honestly answer all your questions I believe the answer lies deep within your heart it is only clouded by what you feel at this moment I can only say this don't ever doubt yourself and we are all humans every now and then we will make wrong decisions we aren't perfect it takes a brave and good man to admit that he was wrong and I believe that you're that man Naruto unknown location Danzo's movements came to a halt when Naruto appeared in front of his group the blonde shinobi was standing still on a tree branch wearing Kanoa's Umbu's uniform his posture gave away nothing and his expression seemed to give off a feeling of coldness his hands were folded across his chest what Danzo did note was that he was intense and seemed prepared for battle the warhawk smelled danger in the atmosphere and motioned for his entire route to appear around him there were about seven of them. He was traveling with they all appeared around the trees surrounding their master their eyes firmly fixed on Naruto the blonde then jumped. 
down the ground and took a few steps forward the umbu standing closer to Danzo flung a kunai towards Naruto the kunai sped down the target but it wasn't intended to hit the blonde Naruto was forced to come to a halt when the kunai was flung towards him the kunai hit the ground just inches away from his right foot as track stopped Naruto looked at Danzo for a few moments before taking out his sword Danzo Naruto started talking within the deathly silent forest his tone was devoid of any feeling. It sounded as though death was speaking what are you trying to do he already knew the answer to the question however the question felt necessary given this occurring predicament Naruto was in the umbu were staring at him like death calculates its prey watching him from head to toe there wasn't a single movement within his body that was missed the watchful eyes captured every moment like a fine-tuned digital camera, yet none of that diverted Naruto's attention from the cripple standing on top of. A tree branch he'd told himself he would not waver he wasn't going to throw in the towel regardless of what was standing before him perhaps it could be seen as thoughtless for him to enter such a cave a cave that housed a cunning and deceitful being like Danzo but Naruto had belief in his strength whether hell opened her mouth and spat out waves of scotching flames towards his form he wouldn't hit the road if he couldn't defeat such an opponent, what good was he there were evil creatures that lurked in the darkness more powerful than Danzo if he couldn't purge this one what hope did he have to defeat the stronger beasts that crawl within the shadows of the elemental nations Danzo looked at all his root trying to see how they would deal with this one he'd taken the strongest with him in case nuisances like this crawled into his way silently nodding to himself Danzo called the other root that had yet to appear aside from the seven Sasuke the warhawk called deal with this I have more pressing matters to deal with in Kanoa however keep him alive I have use for the QB with those words escaping his cold lips Danzo was ready to leave this place before too much attention was drawn here he believed that Sasuke wouldn't have a problem with fighting his former teammate Naruto had been the wall that stood in the way of his escape to Orochimaru and it wasn't a mystery to Danzo that the raven hair Uchiha held some resentment towards the blonde Sasuke appeared a few feet away from Naruto an expressionless face covered his front and he didn't look the slightest interested in doing battle with Naruto the Uchiha stared at Naruto quietly the Sharingan already activated as he studied the blonde like this curious object the look on Naruto never changed even for a second Sasuke turned around and started to walk away from Naruto no he said he then decided to explain himself I no longer have use for you Danzo if Naruto plans to kill you I won't stop him he will be merely Removing you from me Danzo watched Sasuke's back with a narrowed look he was more than ready to pounce on the raven hair to teach him a few lessons he forgot to teach him to think that the Uchiha would turn on him on this day at this time and when he was faced with such a situation so you're finally going to betray me Danzo was rather calm about this however deep inside the black hole he had for a heart anger was bubbling like steaming water, in a pot I'll deal with you later he motioned for. Five of his root to move two left and stood by his side Sasuke shook his head and jumped onto a tree he settled down on a strong branch overlooking everything he then spoke in a cold tone if Naruto proves incompetent I'll end it myself he'd been waiting for the right moment to kill the fool allowing Naruto to do also meant that he wasn't going to get his hands dirty Kanoha might decide to send Hunter Nines for whoever kills the Warhawk and he wasn't looking forward to be looking over his shoulder each time he walked if Naruto couldn't do it then he would finish it all by himself Naruto would take the blame and he would walk free while searching for his brother Naruto knew where his brother was however the blonde wasn't going to tell he had reason to believe threats weren't going to do it this means that after this battle is over Naruto will be weak and he would take advantage of it he could use his Sharingan to get the truth Naruto was under no illusions that Sasuke was actually an ally of his as soon as he was done he will be forced to grow eyes on his back because the Uchiha will pounce on him like a hungry lion and he wasn't about to be made a meal he had so much to live for in this world he couldn't allow anything to stand in the way take care of him quickly Danzo ordered the five root who had left his side he was going to put Sasuke aside for now and deal with the first problem he would deal with Sasuke after Naruto was dealt with high Danzo Sama the five root umbus chorused before flashing towards an impassive Naruto they appeared a few feet away from Naruto on the ground the eyes peered through their masks as they tried to gauge his strength or predict his first move although he was a Jinchuriki of the strongest tailed beast Naruto wasn't known for using its power Danzo assumed he lacked control over the beast this was his life this was what he'd chosen and he would endure he had to battles like this were going to become regular in this journey he decided to take and he hoped to walk out of each battle alive with all his health perhaps he may leave some blood behind but as long as he could walk out of the pits of hell Naruto wasn't going to complain even when faced with creatures that had no emotions he would stand firm there was no holding back from this Naruto thought silently as he 
readied himself for the inevitable battle the sword of the thunder god glowed lightly on his right hand it was held on a reverse grip there was no use in putting it aside when faced with such situation he couldn't afford to waste chakra on pointless things the root umbu who was in the middle definitely a male with black hair sped towards him he had his own blade in his right hand the speed the man used was nothing less of umbu level however naruto was used to such speeds as he trained with Itachi a former Umbu in his own speed was nothing to joke about he didn't wait for the man to reach him Naruto took off in a matching speed small amounts of debris picked up as his feet took off abruptly moving his body towards the incoming enemy as he moved towards the enemy Naruto brought his blade in the front and positioned it in the left around his waist section its tip pointed down as he prepared for a strike when the finally reached each other Naruto instinctively acted first he brought out his sword from the left charging towards the opponent and swinging it in an upward slash that threatened to rip off the opponent's gut from the waist up until his chin the root umbu brought his own blade in a downward slash to counter the attack from naruto both swords clashed between the two opponents naruto's blade sparkled a bit of electricity as the steel blade made contact with it the root umbu tried pushing naruto backwards by adding more force behind his grip on the hilt of his Blade Naruto didn't budge his feet struck to the ground and he put in more strength behind his push stalemate as if reading each other's mind both Naruto and the root one jumped back to create some breathing space between them both landed on the ground gracefully before affirming their grips on their blades they lunged at each other again using the same speed they'd used before Naruto swung his blade from top right in a downward swing that was aimed at his opponent's neck on the left side his had the blade moved with incredible speed blinding to the untrained eye the only traces of its passing through the air was the electric currents that sparkled dimly despite the fast speed in which the blade was swung the root umbu brought out his own blade on his left side both his hands held it in a vertical position its tip facing the heavens the swords clashed in a fury of electric shocks sparkling despite his opponent holding his sword with two hands naruto's swing was still a lot more power what made it more powerful was the speed in which the blade was swung naruto tried pushing his opponent trying to cut through his blade but it didn't break acting swiftly naruto handed his blade on left hand grip firm he swung it down in vertical slash that was above the opponent's head he intended on splitting the man's head in half on reflex only the root umbu held his blade above his head in a horizontal position the swords clashed above his head he held up his blade in a firm defense the root umbu pushed up using the advantage of his position to push away naruto's blade the clash of the blades was over as naruto was unable to continue pressing on with the pressure on his blade his opponent didn't wait for him to attack this time he swung his blade with his right hand in a horizontal slash high around naruto's shoulders the blade cut through the air in blinding speeds the swing threatened to cut through naruto's neck from his left naruto acted swiftly and ducked under the Slash within those seconds he was ducking under the swing a small Rasengan formed on the palm of his right hand the plan was to drive through his opponent's gut however before he could initiate the second stage of his attack another root umbu appeared behind him while he was still in the crouched position the man he'd been exchanging blows with jumped away making room for the one that came on his back the root umbu 2's right foot lashed at Naruto aiming for the right side of his headwind explosion naruto muttered seeing that he couldn't block the kick that was aimed at his head what he did was simple to anyone who mastered wind manipulation converting his chakra to wind wasn't something that naruto found to be a difficulty hence in a short time he was able to covert chakra within his body into wind before letting out when it is released it is expelled out of his body like a shock wave the wind force blew the root two away from naruto however given that the jutsu wasn't that Strong it only pushed him a little away from the blonde the side effect of the jutsu was having the small Rasengan explode on his right hand the explosion did no damage at all Naruto stood up from the ground and looked at his right hand there was no damage done by the Rasengan it would have been a bother if he'd been hurt by his own jutsu he didn't like the idea of getting hurt by something of his creation his left hand was still gripping the sword of the thunder god firmly the eyes of the root. Umbu stared right at him from different directions so far it was good but they shouldn't keep their master waiting as there was still the insolence of Uchiha Sasuke to deal with root Umbu 3 took his turn he rushed at Naruto while doing hand seals he channeled his chakra perfectly before converting it to katana's movements came to a halt when he held his right hand over his mouth fire style great fireball the any man then expelled a large fireball that heated the air around them the fireball that came from the root umbu sped towards a standing still naruto with the jutsu heading his way naruto held up his free right hand wine barrier the blonde mouthed as the winds around him gathered to form a shield in front of him his hand holding it firm and manipulated the jutsu to his liking the flames of the jutsu that was sent towards naruto clashed with the wind barrier the flames hit a wall and were unable to break past the wall naruto had created the flames gathered in front of naruto 
like a wave heating up the temperature around him root umbu for then appeared behind naruto slightly above ground his right foot wailing towards naruto's skull his left foot was left slightly above ground to be used for support when he lands down naruto showed no surprise to the attack he wasn't facing a single opponent after all the left hand holding the sword of the thunder god blurred behind him the kick that was coming towards him collided with his wrist time slowed down slightly as root umbu one appeared at his exposed right side Naruto's right hand was still positioned in front of him holding firm against the fireball his left hand was occupied with the kick the umbu was leaning toward him a little with both his hands holding on firm to his blade the blade was swung in a downward slash the slash was aimed to cut his right hands in this situation Naruto didn't have the time to think thinking would only cut down his time to react in this bind situation Naruto couldn't think much Given that his mind was focused on two other things that is when both Danzo and Sasuke were not included wind explosion Naruto did that jutsu again and everything around him was repelled to a few feet away from him the flames dispersed in front of him and both the men who'd attacked him were forced back he was thankful that he already had a wind jutsu acted to help supplement the jutsu if it wasn't because of that Naruto wasn't sure it would have been enough to protect him against the swing that threatened to cut through his right hand this will become nasty if I don't step up to the next level Naruto thought looking at his opponents rushing into anything wasn't gone get him results but he needed to take measures against the enemy as it appears that it wasn't going to allow him to leave this place on one piece while he'd trained for such situations Naruto wasn't allowed to dwell further into his thoughts as root umbu one lunged at him from the left side the umbu leaped into the air before reaching him Naruto twisted to the left to face the umbu directly while still holding the sword of the thunder on his left hand the root man swung his blade in a downward slash that was aimed straight on top of Naruto's head with the swing coming down on him Naruto drew as much force as he could muster on his left hand while he placed the blade above him to block the slash electric static sparkled when the two different swords clashed in a power struggle the root pressed down on trying to cut his blade in half however Naruto didn't budge his blade held on firmly without even breaking as the swords continued to push each other Naruto held out his right hand and in a second a small Rasengan formed on his palm Naruto pushed the Rasengan towards the man slightly above him his intent was to drive the jutsu right through the root umbu his opponent saw the jutsu spiraling towards his gut and a agent had quick enough reflexes to leap away from Naruto to avoid the jutsu Naruto's Jutsu went towards the ground as he was unable to stop himself from the momentum that pushed him as he attempted to hit his opponent with the Rasengan the Rasengan hit the ground in front of Naruto in a small boom that caused some debris to pick up as Naruto picked himself the five root umbus flashed around all his sides surrounding him their weapons were brought out and held tightly in anticipation for the slaughter they thought to deal onto their foe Naruto looked at Danzo before speaking do you desire the mantle of Hokage that much that you're willing to manipulate the fire lord and sacrifice some of Kanoa's people there were times when the village was threatened yet Danzo did nothing it can't be taken away from the war hawk that he really does love Kanoa with all his heart the man just had a demented way of showing his love to Kanoa Naruto guessed the reason the Sandane was even willing to allow the Warhawk to continue living was because he knew the cripple would always protect Kanoa no matter what however in his own way of protecting the village Danzo was willing to sacrifice some people of the village to meet his objectives as Itachi told him the root umbu were programmed to speak the language of protecting Kanoa almost Everything they do is for Kanoa's safety they each and speak of protecting Kanoa like Danzo they would even go as far as to kill Sonade the Godame Okage given orders by the War Hawk and they would never question his orders they simply did what they were ordered without questions I do what I must to protect Kanoa Danzo responded simply but I don't have time to explain myself to you you are just a tool that has forgotten what it is supposed to do Naruto was a weapon a tool that was supposed to be used by him for Kanoa's protection however things weren't in that manner Naruto was running about without a collar on his neck that was just unacceptable a tool was supposed to have a collar and kept in its safe cage only to be released when it was needed Danzo swore he would correct this even if it meant taking the QB away from Naruto and sealing it inside one of his agents if he did things in that manner then he could have a powerful loyal weapon his root were perfect tools and did Whatever they were told no matter how much power they gained they would still be loyal to him he had trained them to ensure that they were loyal till their outlive their usefulness I see Naruto said before exchanged hands holding his blade he now held the sword on his right hand I'm afraid I will stand in the way I've no intentions of killing you but if I capture you I will send you back to Kanoha after I've extracted the evidence needed to prove your sins Danzo merely snorted silently he 
didn't even have the words to respond to Naruto finish this quickly he ordered his men before the five root umbus surrounding him could carry out their order Naruto was quick to act in response to Danzo's order crouching down Naruto stabbed the ground in front of with his blade lightning shock electric static sparkled from the ground around Naruto and spread in all directions the jutsu was evidently going to catch the root umbu. Due to their quick reflexes, all five leaped back a bit from Naruto. To avoid the blast of electricity the umbu escaped into the trees leaving Naruto alone in a field of electricity but it quickly died down with the targets gone Naruto pulled out his blade from the ground and turned around on reflex as root umbu 4 blurred to the sight behind him the root umbu had a kunai on his right hand it was held on a reverse grip he didn't take any second to lunge at Naruto with the kunai posed straight at Naruto's head the blonde parried the kunai slash with his blade just in front of his face he pushed the umbu back since he had the bigger weapon without giving the root four time to go on the offense again Naruto raised his blade from the right he leaned forward a bit and swung his blade downwards at the opponent's right shoulder the root umbu parried the swing with his kunai to avoid being cut now Naruto had put so much force in his swing that his blade cut through the kunai like scissor cut through a paper the root umbu quickly leaped away from Naruto to avoid the being cut through his shoulder Naruto didn't allow the man to get away from him he lunged straight at the man but he was forced to halt his movements when Root Umbu 2 appeared behind the Root 4 his hands blurred into hand seals earth style mud bullets the Root 4 ducked under when the mud bullets were being spat straight at Naruto the Root Umbu shot several of the mud bullets into Naruto's location the mud bullets reared into the air cutting through the resistance of the wind in fast speeds that needed trained eyes to track since there were many of the bullets Naruto couldn't dodge them all at once if he attempted dodging them he would only end up with holes around his body the bullets were coming fast enough to do more damage they may not be stronger than the wind bullets but they were still dangerous Naruto pointed the tip of his blade towards the incoming wind bullets lightning barrier a wall of electricity sparkled in front of the blade spanning considerable height and width the wind bullets reached the barrier Naruto had erected and upon contact with it they turned into ash while Naruto was still holding his blade keeping the barrier activated root umbu number 1 and 5 appeared behind him in a flash Naruto cursed when both leaped into the air while doing a 360 spin the root one was on his left while the other was on his right the former spun around in midair and lashed a brutal high kick towards Naruto with his right foot while the ratter launched his own kick with his left both kicks were aimed at Naruto's head Naruto only cursed himself for leaving his back unprotected he was forced to push his barrier further away from him and towards the root umbu who'd spat out towards him the wall moved towards the root vaporization any living thing that stood in the way the wall of lightning didn't reach the umbu though it dispersed before it could do any damage at the same time the two kicks that were charged at Naruto all managed to hit him straight into the head Naruto winced as both kicks collided with his head it definitely hurt like hell before Naruto could take flight being carried by the force of both kicks the root umbu one yanked his right foot while he'd taken off to the air because of the kicks Naruto was flung to the other side by the root umbu he flew towards the direction of the greenly trees he'd been thrown into the air with so much force that he wasn't able to regain his balance quickly umbu root 5 then appeared above Naruto while he was Still heading towards the trees the umbu was facing downwards when he appeared above him and then then his right foot was swung down in his chest Naruto put both his hands in an X formation to block the kick despite putting a defense Naruto was still sent crashing down the ground the blonde hit the ground with a resounding boom the kick had hit him with a considerable amount of power and force gravity didn't help matters either a small crater was formed on the ground due to Naruto's crash the Blonde was quick to recover from the assault and wasn't hot crashing down the ground did hurt but he sustained no noteworthy injuries Naruto grabbed the hilt of his blade firmly and stood up he was again put on the defensive because Root Umbu 3 lunged at him with a high right footed kick that came onto his right side Naruto held out his right hand to block the kick the kick collided with his left hand and pushed him off balance Umbu 4 blurred into his sight just in front of him the Umbu Root 3 was still positioned on his right side after kicking him Naruto wasn't given much time to do anything as the umbu 4 was already going through hand seals wind style wind dragon Naruto braced himself when the green eyed wind dragon formed in front of him it was much bigger than him and being a wind user Naruto knew it wouldn't be healthy for his body if he allowed the full waves of the dragon to cut through him he held out both his hands together as the wind dragon reared towards him roaring with 
intent to cut through his flesh the jutsu hit Naruto dead on and sent him flying backwards towards more trees as soon as the wind jutsu hit him it was quickly dispelled another root umbu flashed above him while doing hand seals wind style great wind break through powerful gusts of wind picked up above the unsuspecting blonde Naruto cursed again. In this position he couldn't do much to shield himself against the gusts that threatened him the powerful gusts of wind crushed Naruto under their force. Sending him crashing down the ground again as soon as Naruto hit the ground Root Umbu 2 was already doing hand seals with Root 1 waiting behind him the former hit the ground with both hands after doing his hand seals earth style earth prison 4 walls sprouted from the ground and surrounded Naruto who was still lying down the ground after he was sent crashing by some powerful gusts of wind the 4 walls locked creating a strong prison for Naruto the walls were somewhat twice as big as Naruto was the only escape was above the where there was nothing blocking the sun from shining down at Naruto root umbu 1 and 3 appeared above the prison as Naruto attempted to stand up the two then went through hand seals before shouting their jutsu in union fire style great fire breath both Danzo's men released streams of flames that charged down at the earth prison the flames combined with each other making a rather huge stream of intense flames that heated the atmosphere within the area of the flames gleefully filled the prison with Naruto still inside the intense flames seemingly burning down the blonde as the walls began to crumble down under the intense heat this should do it Umbu once said as he dropped down the ground watching the flames continue to burn inside the prison they'd formed for Naruto the others then appeared behind him don't you think there's something that isn't right here Umbu 4 question looking ahead Umbu 3 nodded there has been no sound of screams coming out of there and this looks to have been a little easy our opponent seemed to be capable to holding out his own a few moments ago and we know that he is extremely fast yet so far we've not seen anything remarkable of his speed this was indeed something interesting there was little doubt that Naruto was a fast jonin he even had the oration and yet so far he hasn't used it at all since they started fighting it could be because they had started working as a team and used the advantage of their numbers that things appeared easy nothing was certain though just then the prison that was made to cook Naruto exploded in a fury of flames the flames spread out in all directions forcing everyone to take steps back to avoid the spitting flames from burning them the prison crumbled down like it was hit with a rather powerful shockwave Sasuke smirked when his eyes caught the sight of Naruto he had been beginning to think that the blonde couldn't do it but he was wrong Naruto was just Getting started he didn't know what the blonde could do at his full power nobody had that knowledge but he was going to get glimpse of the blonde's power today who knows he might even become a threat that needs to be eliminated with the earth prison destroyed at the flames dead everything settled down so did the winds and the heating temperatures Naruto was standing still inside a small crater his clothes were a bit messed up and tattered a bit a few cuts were visible on both his hands but he looked otherwise okay the sword of the thunder god was strapped on his back despite surviving an attack that would have surely killed someone else the blonde didn't look like he'd gone through some change everything looked normal in his physical appearance from a pit that had now shattered down into dust naruto took several steps away from the area he could very well sense all the root umbu danzo and sasuke his senses had now heightened and everything with his abilities was enhanced he stopped when everyone could clearly see him and held out his right hand staring into its palm he thought this mode will only last for a few moments given the low magnitude of wind around here if the wind wasn't strong then his armor wouldn't last as long as he wills it to he'd taken some improvements in the time he spent within the wind country he found a way to use the jutsu in an area where the wind wasn't strong however he had to sacrifice so much of his chakra to keep the wind armor for a given time in an area where the wind was strong he didn't have to burn much of his chakra to keep the armor Naruto looked at Danzo who was standing on top of a tree branch away from him his dogs were still standing beside him looking ready for combat Sasuke was still nearly by five trees away from Danzo he changed spots no doubt he was keeping his left eye on the warhawk to ensure that he doesn't do anything before Naruto could speak his opponents flashed around him they again were surrounding him this time they appeared to be in the mood for talking I was wondering how things appeared to be easy still it is a surprise to me that you survived our last attack normally that would put anyone out of commission root for spoke in that monotone that all umbu favored under normal circumstances Naruto should have at least suffered some burns because of those flames that hit him he was put inside a pot of intense flames how was he not hurt the only wounds he seemed to have suffered are the bruises he received from the wind dragon that hit him head on I'm not into exhibitionism so I'll make this quick Naruto responded in a calm and relaxed tone you wouldn't even figure that he was surrounded by five root umbus who'd nearly burned him alive Naruto held out his right hand in a horizontal position wind cutter Naruto did a swift and fast spin the umbu had been quick to make a run for it when they sensed something bad to happen and the men weren't the only ones to make a run for it even Danzo 
and Sasuke made a run for it although they'd sensed that something had happened the root Umbu hadn't seen what had actually happened when Naruto spun Sasuke and Danzo were able to see everything because of their digitsus it took a few seconds but it happened everything that was standing within a 50m radius was cut down all the trees everything that was standing they all fell down the ground after being cut down what the root Umbu 5 thought with wide eyes a simple spin that didn't even last for two seconds and the result was this no doubt if they'd been caught they would have been cut down two reflexes and shinobi instincts had been the savior of the day all the root umbu all jumped down to the ground on their feet they still surrounded naruto they couldn't stay on the trees since they'd been cut down by naruto to think he would be able to do that and make it look so simple naruto then suddenly blurred out of sight eyes widened at the speed they didn't see anything what they did know was that he disappeared from his spot that was just some speed that was remarkable Danzo couldn't even keep track of it with his implanted Sharingan he didn't think that Naruto would be this fast he was positive that the blonde wasn't even using the narration you are the leader of this group no Naruto suddenly said after he appeared in front of the root Umbu 3 the man widened his eyes since he didn't feel or sense anything he had not even known the blonde was there before he opened his mouth to Speak the man quickly tried to act, but Naruto's right fist crashed onto his gut the man winced clutching his gut as he fell down the ground on both his knees Naruto didn't allow him to hit the ground though in a swift movement he spun around to his left his return was on the right and his right foot was raised high enough to catch the falling umbu the kick hit the man straight on his chest in a brutal manner a few cracks were heard as the man coughed up blood Naruto yanked the man's right hand with his left hand before he could be flown away by the force of his brutal kick moving quickly before others could intervene his right hand found its way onto the man's neck he forcefully slammed the man down the ground the crash to the ground was brutal and naruto ensured the head first hit the ground to knock out the man naruto stood up as the root umbu 5 lunged at him from the left given his heightened senses naruto could feel everything that was happening within the same 50m radius when the umbu blurred into existence on his left side naruto simply stood still without even turning to face the umbu the man came in high with a right foot kick aimed at his back but the kick didn't do anything to naruto it merely rebounded off sending the man flying away from naruto the armor wasn't just for offense and speed it had amazing defensive capabilities when other people say they had the ultimate defense naruto could boast about having the ultimate offensive and defensive jutsu in his Mind wind was the most powerful of the elements he could manipulate lightning and fire but none of them were like wind the element could be silent or loud as a tsunami fire was strong but with flames it was always with a bang perhaps he favored wind the most because it was his natural affinity either way wind was still the sharpest element in his view lightning style thunder bolt a bolt of lightning was released by root umbu two speeding towards naruto and blinding speeds naruto then swiftly took out the sword of the thunder god he swung his blade towards the lightning jutsu a wave of lightning collided with the thunder bolt and the jutsus cancelled each other in a small explosion the one then rushed at naruto from behind once he reached the blonde and the man spun around in an attempt for a spinning kick that was aimed at naruto's back the kick just phased through naruto like was intangible after image than the man thought after he didn't feel any contact with naruto naruto blurred into Existence behind the umbu with the sword of the thunder god firmly on his right hand before the na agent could respond to his presence Naruto drove his blade through the man's right shoulder lightning burst forth from the blade the sparkle of lightning engulfed the root umbu's whole body guh the umbu let loose of a loud shriek because the lightning was shocking him literally despite the obvious scream of pain coming from the umbu Naruto didn't remove his blade from the umbu umbu 5 went through hand seals before slamming both his hands to the ground earth style quick sand the ground beneath naruto shook slightly as the ground began to sink the screaming umbu managed to pull all his strength before grabbing his left hand to keep him from doing anything naruto's feet became trapped within the sand from down to his knees keeping him immobile naruto looked down at the sand it was sticky it was impressive that it could hold down his wind armor his senses went off when he felt a chakra Spike from his right side he quickly looked to the side while his blade was still in the flesh of the umbu he'd pierced umbu for was going through hand seals he slammed both his hands down the ground lightning pillars pillars of lightning formed around naruto and the umbu one lightning currents then joined together creating a squire prison of lightning naruto was trapped within the prison his second prison since the battle started but this time he wasn't alone and his movements were sealed root Umbu 2 then appeared above the prison going through hand seals sway ton water gun the man spat out a stream of water that moved towards the lightning prison water plus lightning didn't actually mix together the likely outcome was pain to Naruto seeing the water coming towards him Naruto slammed the man holding his left hand down the quicksand the blade then went further through the man eliciting a shriek from the man it was still a surprise to Naruto that the man was still conscious more. 
lightning came forth from the blade eliciting a terrifying scream from the umbu it only lasted a second as everything went black in his world due to extreme pain another second passed and the lightning prison disappeared from existence the only thing that hit naruto was the water gun however the water gun was repelled from naruto towards the root umbu the umbu quickly made a gateway to avoid the jutsu the root umbu one was still out cold beside naruto that was two down and three more to go naruto placed his blade on its sheath on his back he took a single step forward but suddenly came to a halt when his body suddenly froze he held out his right as he felt a bit worn out circulating the wind chakra throughout my body while keeping a thin layer of pure wind takes much more effort concentration and a lot of my stamina he thought mildly i really don't have much time left a clone puffed into existence beside naruto the clone leaped into the air before taking out a three-pronged kanai the clone then spun around in the air while he spun kanai were flung in all directions and numbers in this formation none of the kanais could be deflected and they couldn't predict where he would appear three more clones appeared beside him and began to flash around the kanais that were still flying in the air all three remaining umbu hit the ground after the clones started to flash around the area each of the clones had successfully teleported right into the path of the men before hitting them with the raisingan they weren't killed just put out of commission the clones hadn't wasted much time with the remaining three umbu given the unpredictability of their movements it was easy for them to get to the umbu naruto turned his sights towards danzo now then he didn't finish speaking in a movement of unbelievable speed that shocked even danzo naruto disappeared from view and appeared in front of danzo not even sasuke was capable of following those movements with his mature sharingan the two guards of danzo were able to act on instincts they appeared between naruto and danzo however naruto had his secondary blade out on his right hand already the blade was moving straight towards danzo's Abdomen Fu who was faster to react had his right hand slightly outstretched holding a kunai on the left side of Danzo the kunai was used to block a slash that could have pierced through Danzo's gut Danzo narrowed his eyes dangerously at Naruto that was just dangerous the blonde had moved in a speed he'd never seen before despite having the Sharingan to predict the future he couldn't see anything and even if he'd predicated the movement, he wouldn't have reacted in time to defend himself it was. Even a miracle that Fu acted quickly before the Danzo or his other bodyguard could do anything something caught their attention the kunai that had blocked Naruto's secondary blade strike broke into two pieces Naruto had coated the blade with wind chakra to sharpen it and had put a considerable amount of force behind the strike but wasn't all Naruto uttered three words wind blade extension the words left his lips smoothly the basis of the jutsu was simple what Naruto had done was extend the blade with pure wind from the tip given that the blade was already glaring at Danzo's gut the close proximity made it dangerous Danzo widened his eyes when he saw the blade extend with his Sharingan he quickly leaped backwards to avoid the blade piercing through his gut if that happened it would do much damage to him then the bodyguards followed their master a distance away from Naruto you bastard Inno growled when he saw blood dripping from Naruto's blade no doubt the blood belonged to his Master unforgivable his eyes traced back to Danzo just above his left hip his clothing was cut and a nasty gash was clearly visible Danzo looked at Naruto with a slight glare if he hadn't moved faster the blow would have been fatal and that wouldn't be good for his health especially when he had his trump card sealed Naruto side flicking his blade to draw away from the blood I was hoping that surprise would be enough to do a fatal wound he said rather calmly I will not forget about this Danzo suddenly said looking straight at naruto he could reveal his trump card now and force things to work his way however he wished not to reveal his trump card at this time and certainly not at this place naruto was still a factor that he still needed the kyubi inside of him to be precise but just because he was willing to let this slide and deal with other matters didn't mean that he would forget about it no not in this world he just had other matters to deal with rather handle too misbehaving Children continuing Danzo spoke again for now I must retreat there is already enough evidence of my presence around here I must leave now to deal with other matters I will however pay both of you for this the warhawk turned around to leave his guards still faced Naruto do you think I'll allow you to escape Naruto asked quietly the question was definitely rhetorical he wasn't going to allow the warhawk to escape without doing what he wished to do he had to apprehend the warhawk before taking him back to Kanoha to face Judgment Sasuke then chose to remind everyone that he was still around the Uchiha flashed between the two parties his back facing Danzo's group you can leave Danzo the Uchiha said do not misunderstand my intentions nevertheless Naruto appears to be worth my time more than dealing with you I know I'll deal with you soon Naruto however has shown me something interesting and I hate admitting it but if I don't take my chance now things may not work well for me Danzo 
didn't say anything in response as Umbu guards merely followed him as he took his leave he would eventually find out what happened after he left though he was slightly interested in how things would fare out after what he'd witnessed from Naruto he had to leave this place Sasuke looked at Naruto who seemed ready to follow Danzo to cut off his escape the Uchiha held out his right hand the familiar sound of chirping birds rang within the clearing Sasuke dashed towards Naruto with the Chidori on his right hand Naruto merely stood still a frown firmly painted across his face as soon as Sasuke reached him from the front his right hand moved the Uchiha had his Chidori ready to pierce him through the chest like he did last time Naruto caught Sasuke's right hand on the wrist like Itachi did a few years ago the grip on the Uchiha's wrist was tight and cut off the flow of chakra dispelling his jutsu Naruto looked at Sasuke rather coldly, he wasn't afraid to stare at the Sharingan he had. Countermeasures already said he'd worked with the Manjiku Sharingan long enough to know a few tricks to avoid being caught in its Jinjutsu do you think that this technique will get me again you pierced me twice with it and nearly killed me I've seen it more than once to know more than a single way to counter it if you need to get me you'll need something little Sasu Sasuke glared while trying to force his right hand off Naruto's grip, but the blonde wouldn't allow him to go the Uchiha forced A. Smirk on his face you still remember that I was beginning to think that you've forgotten about it since you don't talk about it Naruto didn't want to play Sasuke's games he was running out of time here last time we fought I beat you Sasuke what do you think will change things this time that was last time how about we fight and see who can win he relished the opportunity to beat up the blonde and force the same embarrassment he dealt to him he trained hard enough with and without Danzo too believe that he could take out anyone who faced him Naruto shook his head still holding Sasuke's hand firmly I don't have time for this I need to get to Danzo before he vanishes yes things would only be worse if he allowed the Warhawk to reach Kanoa Danzo wouldn't report this to Tsunade though no he would keep it to himself however dealing with him next time will be rather difficult since the man will be more prepared allowing the man to reach Kanoa without being bind meant that he was going to continue doing what he was planning and that was what Naruto had come here to stop if Danzo went back to Kanoa safely it would mean that he failed and he would be forced to take other measures to stop what Danzo was planning from happening you have to get past Sasuke wasn't allowed to finish speaking Naruto yanked the Uchiha closer to him the distance between them was cut down to mere inches Naruto's right knee crashed onto Sasuke's gut, with unbelievable force the one knee was enough to make Sasuke cough out things from his mouth the pain was just unbelievable to Sasuke it felt like his insides had been forcefully turned upside down the Uchiha fell to the ground on his knees clutching his gut you may have grown a little Sasuke but you're still a child Naruto said before walking away from the raven head I'm not saying that you're weak you are strong but the blonde didn't say anything a few clones puffed into existence Naruto disappeared before they did the clones followed suit with the root umbu sasuke was left alone looking miserable he was definitely seething in anger over what had just happened it felt like naruto had just slapped his pride in front of many eyes before kicking it into a trash bin sasuke never felt so furious than this he'd failed to redeem himself well that was embarrassing a voice suddenly said behind sasuke the uchiha quickly turned around to face the man who'd spoken behind him sasuke glared what do you want he demanded in a low growl heat seen this man before and he would never forget him he'd once seen him at Danzo's hideout this man didn't make him feel good at all he always carried a dark aura around him the aura always made his skin crawl even though Danzo was a dark bastard he was nothing compared to this man Sasuke's question was ignored your pride is wounded why don't we follow Danzo in relief some stress off him I know where he is hasn't Naruto gone after him Naruto could have only left in a hurry to follow the Warhawk Sasuke understood that if the blonde allowed the man to reach Kanoa things wouldn't be easy for him after what had recently occurred he has but he won't find him which is why I want us to go after him he will be good to healing your wounded pride the man responded calmly knowing that Sasuke wasn't going to refuse the offer he knew that the Uchiha was beyond furious at the embarrassment he just suffered and he would take anything to re affirm his superiority fine then show me the way do not misunderstand me though I'm only going with you to settle things with Danzo after that I want nothing to do with you Sasuke stated standing on both his feet time skip Naruto sped through the forest of the fire country rushing towards the location sure had told him Danzo was battling with Sasuke and Jubi he'd looked for the warhawk around the forest but couldn't find him anywhere and so he decided to return to Kanoa and just wait for him at his root bases but before he could get to Kanoa sure had informed him that he'd found the root commander's location allowing Danzo to return to Kanoa and continue to plan what he was planning would be a failure on his part Naruto. 
couldn't allow something like that to happen it was why he decided that he would kill or capture Danzo no matter what even if it meant going into his hideout to do it whether he would be forced to use the QB's chakra or not he would do the deed the Warhawk was corrupt and needed to be brought to justice of course killing him wasn't his only option no he had to be brought before the leaders of Kanoha with the evidence of his actions and then, he would be faced with the judgment he so deserved killing the old Warhawk would only be a choice if capturing him seemed fuel Naruto increased his speed as he sensed chakra usage not far away from him he wasn't using the trees to travel he was using the ground and only dust was left when he passed through between the trees if anyone was watching they couldn't even see that it was he who had passed the speed he was using was just too fast for any eye to track to jitsu or not the terrain he'd come to view was a small clearing trees burned on the side showing that fire jutsus had been used the ground didn't show much damage except for a few craters that were made by a human who'd hit the ground there were also trees cut down evidently cut by wind jutsu on the right side of naruto the burned bodies of danzo's personal guards were lying down on the ground dead one couldn't even identify them without having made contact with them first they seemed to have been burned by something deadly and very hot the corpses were nothing but burn marks all over straight ahead Naruto saw a man he'd come to see as a real enemy Jubi he was with Sasuke and between them was Danzo Sasuke looked beat up and his clothes were torn up cuts over his upper body since he was no longer wearing a shirt the warhawk was in a rather pathetic condition his face was all swelled up and bloody his usually bandaged left hand was exposed revealing the experiments it had gone through Shursui's I was also exposed Sasuke was holding Danzo's right arm while Jubi held the left hand the Uchiha took notice of his presence and smirked at him his blade was on his right hand even Jubi was holding a blade with his right hand both looked at him for a moment before cleaving through Danzo's arms cutting them from the shoulders blood gushed out of the shoulders in a merry without even looking back the warhawk fell down on the ground on both his knees his hands were thrown right at his sides by his opponent Sasuke, turned to him how nice of you two. Join us Naruto the Uchiha stated I'm not yet satisfied what do you say for a rematch the blade on the Uchiha's right hand was playing joyfully in anticipation the fact that he was worn out and already had spent too much chakra on Danzo didn't seem to concern him fighting you in that condition wouldn't be fair Naruto stated walking towards the enemy however if you insist I will have no problems in beating you up I also have a score to settle with the blonde was cut off when Jubi spoke Sasuke get away from Danzo if Danzo was going to be killed then he could at least take these children with him though he didn't like dying as he had much to do in this world it was a reality he'd used all his Sharingan eyes and his body couldn't take it anymore even if they left him be he would eventually die since that brat Sasuke had used him as a punching bag after Jubi had gotten rid of most of the eyes on his right hand to make things fair he had been infuriated that such a thing would happen to him he Danzo the commander of Root the one who held the darkness of Kanoha the boy couldn't have done the deed alone not without the weapon intervening he'd not thought that the weapon would also turn on him on this stage not after the good plans they'd made for Kanoha and the world curse that Orochimaru he was probably laughing if he was watching this marks began to spread across Danzo's body as the warhawk activated a seal that would destroy all secrets on his body and everything close to him as soon as his heart gave out an explosion would set off Sasuke and Jubi made their distance from the Warhawk to avoid being caught in the explosion however Naruto ran in a blur towards the Warhawk he couldn't allow Shursui's eye to disappear within the explosion not when Itachi had already given him the other he had in his possession it would be such a waste to allow Danzo to destroy it in a matter of less than a second Naruto was right in front of Danzo in a crouched down position to meet with Danzo's level the Rajian pierced through the Warhawk's chest sending a bit of lightning shock throughout his body the shock wasn't meant to kill him no it was done to give the heart some life even if it was for a second Naruto pulled his blade from Danzo's chest before swinging it in an insane speed he cut through Danzo's neck separating the head from the shoulders just then the explosion set off and a black cloud covered the area around Danzo. A second later Naruto jumped out of the black cloud. With Danzo's head on his hands he didn't wait for the explosion to end to seal Danzo's head way he didn't want anyone getting their heads on it as it would be catastrophic if he allowed something like that to happen after everything died down a large crater was formed by Danzo's suicide explosion and the remains of his body were in the middle ho I didn't think you would be able to save it Jubi said turning his attention to Naruto now that you have what should I do about it of course he had no use for the eye he was only interested in Sasuke and ensuring that a useless goat like Danzo was eliminated but it was still fun seeing Naruto try to figure out what he may want to do with the eye even if the blonde goes away with it he will always keep it safe because of his perceived interest Naruto narrowed his eyes that the man Sasuke wouldn't be a problem since he was evidently tired using the wind cloak was also costing him chakra however running at fast speeds while coming here had brought 
a resistance of wind that he used it was just like a wind that was flowing even though he was the one disrupting it he was able to capitalize on it hence he still had his cloak even now even if it does disperse he could still call upon nature's chakra or the Kyuubi's chakra Jubi started to take slow movements towards Naruto before he just vanished out of sight Naruto stood still and narrowed his eyes on his right Jubi appeared in the side and seemed happy that Naruto had tracked his movements. With ease what are you doing with Sasuke and what really is your plan Naruto asked keeping calm despite the fact that he could sense Sasuke sneaking in from behind he is much more of an ally than Danzo I can easily mold him into my liking but I couldn't do that with Danzo I don't have a use for tools I can't manipulate it is quite easy to get Sasuke Kun to do what I want all I have to do is bring up his beloved brother and perhaps even reveal a little secret I learned from Danzo Jubi stated so simply like he hadn't hinted exposing one of the biggest hidden secrets and Kanoa Naruto's look turned a bit stern there could only be one secret and he didn't like the sound of what this man was saying what are you really planning I don't know he really looked like he didn't know Naruto traced the movements of then man's eyes despite them being pure black stop Sasuke he said rather calmly you'll only be beaten up and sent back to Kanoa again if you engage in a fight with those words leaving his mouth Jubi flashed behind the Uchiha as he knew he wasn't going to listen to his words a quick chop on the back of Sasuke's head and the Uchiha started falling Jubi caught him before flipping him onto his right shoulder see you soon Naruto Kun and next time we will have a fair battle I promise you with that said Jubi disappeared in a flash of black along with Sasuke Naruto stood still as though waiting for someone his senses had picked up a strong chakra signature and he could guess who the person was Jubi must have also sensed this presence perhaps this is the reason he left quickly without an attempt to fight him that man always liked to do something to him but this time he didn't Orochimaru Naruto said turning to face the snake Sanin Kabuto was close by the Sanin on his right side what do you want he couldn't think of fighting someone of Orochimaru's caliber given his current condition he didn't even have to forget that Kabuto was also with the man trying to pick a fight now was just flat out suicide Orochimaru grinned slightly looking straight at Naruto hello Naruto kun his grin widened a bit it is such a joy to see you again how have you been over these past years Naruto merely remained quiet not feeling the need to indulge the snake well I guess you've been fine more than fine if I should say given your recent activities I really do not have the time or the energy to play a guessing game with you Orochimaru Naruto stated in a rather cold tone while he was curious of the intentions of the snake's presence here he wasn't going to indulge him on his games he really shouldn't even be speaking to this man but there wasn't any harm done here especially since he did not appear like he'd come here to fight it would really be a problem if the snake Sanin had come with the thought of fighting him Orochimaru merely chuckled in response and folded his hands across his chest well given your recent actions towards Awagakure I imagine you can't afford to stay in the same place once Anoki is ordered for your assassination after all though Naruto showed no reaction to this revelation Orochimaru was certain his little slip was heard you've yet to return to Kanoha also I'm sure Tsunade will be furious with you Naruto had no doubt that was bound to be the case he would face it though he'd made a choice and he would have to face its consensuses he wasn't exactly sure what would await him in Kanoha when he does return however whatever that would greet him he would bear it Danzo is also dead and you also have to deal with that not to mention the Nahu will probably be crawling within the root bases and I'm sure once they figure out who killed their master they will be coming after you yes time and energy is essential for you these days Orochimaru concluded with a smirk I'm no under illusions about that Orochimaru I imagine that if I'm not even careful with vermins like you crawling around my existence will be cut short Naruto stated he had enemies that were out for his life and he would need to be careful if he is to see his dream through well he had allies to watch over his back so that was good for him I'd be surprised if you were under illusions Orochimaru said I have an offer for you I'm not interested Naruto was quick to say it was naturally that he doesn't even think about it nothing good was going to come out with indulging the devil with whatever he'd planned Orochimaru merely widened his smirk but you don't even know what I want to offer you of course the leader of Odogekure had expected such a response from the blonde he was the devil in the eyes of many and as such Naruto saw him as an enemy it doesn't matter Naruto responded firmly I'll not make a deal with you whatever you're going to offer me it will require for me to pay something and you an enemy Orochimaru I should be thinking of killing you it would prove difficult though the snake Sanin felt much more powerful than before it made Naruto a little anxious but he didn't show it as Orochimaru would no doubt try to make use of it I was going to offer you my help with the perfect weapon Jubi as he now calls himself you see I made him and I know everything about him when you've made your choice search for me and then we will talk Orochimaru stated with a wide grin planted across his face what makes you think that I'll come to you for help Orochimaru Orochimaru chuckled as turned around to leave with the silent Kabuto because I know you will the snake Sanin then disappeared from Naruto's sight along. 
With Kabuto he held all the keys with Jubi and if Naruto wanted to deal with him he would have to come to him for answers he didn't know Naruto's full potential but he knew Jubi was a freak when it came to power Naruto shook his head he hadn't foreseen such a meeting but it still wouldn't disturb his thoughts silently Naruto went on to gather the evidence and the remains of Danzo's corpse before he too made his exit. From the clearing hideout Itachi's blurry vision fell upon Naruto who was sitting on a chair beside his bed though he couldn't see it perfectly Itachi was positive that the blonde was lost in his thoughts while so much was happening around the elemental nations and the blonde was involved with many things in the next days when the UN conference does commence things would only become trickier and Naruto would have much more to do in his current state Itachi couldn't do much for Naruto. He was going to die anytime soon he couldn't fight his brother in a fair fight at this time he'd not thought that it would come to this but the he'd also not thought that he would end up being Naruto's sensei although he didn't want Naruto to know that his sickness had become much more violate inside his body the blonde was now aware of this fact such awareness was standing in the way of Naruto's potential how could he fight when he Itachi was lying in bed with an incurable diseases and blind eyes how could he completely focus when the only person who'd given him more than anyone and something to live for was going to die soon for someone like Naruto who was constantly assaulted with loneliness keeping complete focus wasn't a possibility under such circumstances moreover Naruto had never had anyone he cared for die before his eyes right now the blonde was surely feeling helpless perhaps it was why he was even considering going to Tsunade to get him help but Itachi had made up his mind he wasn't going to go to Tsunade not by any chance even if it would mean he could face his stupid brother Itachi sighed inwardly pondering what he was going to do next the drugs were nullifying most of the pain but he was still feeling it at the same time the drugs were destroying his body since he'd been using them recklessly over the past two years just so he could keep strong for Naruto's sake however his body couldn't take them anymore his diocese only found more strength to pull him towards death's door slowly Itachi got up from the bed it was close to a wall he faced Naruto while leaning against the wall for support Nehru he was disrupted by a violent cough that pierced through his chest with some unbearable pain Itachi didn't know whether to press his hands against his chest or mouth to stop the blood that was on a free flow from his mouth shots of pain went through Naruto's heart without mercy rushing over to the man he saw as a brother and offer his help wasn't going to make him better he couldn't even administer an antidote to make him better neither could he apply any form of seal on him to make him live further with the disease still inside of him he was useless right now and Itachi was eventually going to die and there was nothing he could do about it even though he thought he would have to take Itachi at Tsunade for her to heal him he couldn't do that Itachi would never forgive him and he was sure the Godame Hokage would watch him die she was presumably furious with him over his recent actions and probably really emotional if she were to see him with Itachi she would probably tear the Uchiha apart blaming him for his recent actions Itachi also didn't want the truth to come out regardless of how much he tried convincing him that the truth would one day come out Itachi wasn't giving up the Uchiha massacre secret was something that Itachi didn't want to be revealed Naruto stooped up from his chair and walked over to a small table on the other side of the room he fetched a cup of water and some pills before bringing up to the Uchiha. These pills cost a lot of money and if it wasn't for the bounty Kisame was now collecting he wouldn't be able to afford them for much longer they didn't heal Itachi they just prolonged his life for a few days Itachi took the small cup of water and one pill from Naruto's palm he swallowed the pill and gulped all the water in the cup before handing it to Naruto he didn't take the rest of the pills silence reigned for a couple of minutes. Were you in a battle Itachi asked since the main subject didn't want to be brought out yet the Uchiha saw that it was best to start with other matters once they'd started talking then it would come out Naruto nodded I was in the wind capital when Shin informed me of what Danzo had done he had been manipulating the fire lord with Shirsue's eye and had now gained complete control over him it was only a matter of time before he ordered the fire lord to relieve Tsunade of her duties as Hokage and get himself elected this cause of action would make the Transition smooth in Danzo's sense that is when I heard of this I had Shin give him the location of the cripple and I went after him Naruto explained keeping his gaze at the bed rather than at Itachi it didn't come off as a surprise that Danzo would plan for something like that and would go that far to get the seat of Hokage a seat he desired since the night aim Hokage was still alive to anyone who'd worked with Danzo it was no secret that the Warhawk wanted to become Hokage he'd even go as far as trying to assassinate the Sandame to get it having the Fire Lord remove Tsunade from her position means that he wouldn't have to kill some of the strong shinobi who would be of use to him Itachi assumed that if he just killed Tsunade then he wouldn't become Okage without having control over the Fire Lord a rebellion would surely break and Kanoha would be plunged into a civil war. If Tsunade was suddenly killed a civil war would weaken Kanoha and leave Kanoha open to attacks and such. 
An end wasn't something Danzo wanted the current Hokage was also not someone easy to kill if Danzo failed to kill Tsunade then she would find out of his plans such a discovery would make things hard for the cripple as he would be charged with treason and death by public execution was the only punishment he was going to get I thought he would do something like that eventually since he took Shirsue's attach he paused for a moment to gather his energy even just sitting up like this and talking. Normally was energy consuming still he didn't allow the cracks to appear I hope you handled it Naruto shook his head Itachi's bra furrowed in question to the response by Naruto but the blonde didn't seem to catch it so he opened his mouth what happened I don't want to believe that you couldn't handle Danzo he might be strong but I know you were able to fight in the same level as Akage I wasn't able to fight at my fullest potential Naruto said however Danzo was eventually killed by Sasuke and Jubi I managed to save Shirsui's eye before he destroyed his own body though Itachi was silent for a few moments the new piece of information was puzzling and serious enough to worry him to death what do you mean Sasuke and Jubi killed Danzo before I fought some of Danzo's henchmen Danzo had ordered Sasuke to fight me but he refused saying he wanted him Danzo to be killed since he was no longer a use to him after I dealt with the henchmen Danzo escaped and Sasuke stood in my way I didn't fight him but the seconds I wasted were enough for Danzo to escape my senses I didn't find him until Sasuke and Jubi had ripped both of his hands from his body Itachi became silent again watching Naruto carefully as Sasuke working with Jubi Naruto shook his head no not now at least but soon they will be working together especially since Jubi knows the truth and will most likely tell Sasuke he can manipulate Sasuke using this information however I don't know about having complete obedience from him it would need Shirsui's eye for something like that despite whatever that Sasuke might involve himself with even if it was something catastrophic Itachi would always love him Naruto could never replace Sasuke nor even compare to the young Uchiha even though Itachi was worried for his brother he wouldn't show it to anyone since Naruto already knew that Itachi loved his little brother he didn't need to ask if he was concerned or not if it was up to Itachi the Uchiha would rather have him and Sasuke become friends and try to form this peaceful shinobi world he desires but it wasn't about to happen not given Sasuke's attitude and his tendency to involve himself with dangerous people what is my foolish brother planning to do now Itachi mused loudly before shaking his head slightly can we assume that he is defected from Kanoha that looks like it but since no one but me knows what actually happened he may just return to the village however since he has no attachments I doubt he will return he is mostly like to be branded a miss and mean Naruto explained it would change a lot of things in Kanoha if Sasuke does end up becoming a miss and mean we can conclude that he will be told the truth behind the Uchiha massacre if that becomes the case he is most likely to resent Kanoha Itachi said managing to put some strength in his tone you know what to do if that happens in my current state I can't do anything and if Sasuke sees me like this he is most likely going to hate you even more as he will blame you he already knows of my connection with you I believe when he attempted to attack me he wanted to get that piece of information from my head using the Sharingan I'd already made it obvious that I would not need to blackmail Naruto stated calmly I know that he will hate me even if he doesn't see you if you before Jubi finds us he will seek nothing more than to destroy me but I trust you'll handle things Naruto nodded and spoke I will have to seek out the Fire Lord too undo the damage Danzo did how do you hope to correct things I have both eyes of sure sway in my possession Naruto raised his right hand above his head not more than a minute passed and a crow flew onto his hand he then brought it close to his eyes both the eyes of the crow were sure sway's manjiku sharingan I should be able undo the genjutsu without the need to kill him if it weren't for these eyes there was no way he could rewrite koto amatsukami within the fire lord's mind these eyes would prove useful in situations like these there was no mind controlling Jinjutsu they couldn't undo the Jinjutsu on the Fire Lord was cast by one of these eye but undoing it wouldn't be a bother without the eyes the only choice was to make the Fire Lord disappear as he would still follow his programming even when Danzo is dead well will you look at that the problem didn't die with Danzo Itachi nodded to Naruto's response he found it to be acceptable I'm glad you were able to retrieve the remaining eye now you just have to ensure that they do not fall into the wrong hands the Uchiha said rather seriously what else happened Orochimaru appeared Naruto responded mildly he said something about Jubi and knows more about him than anyone he offered his help but I'm um, it comes with a price Naruto sighed and looked at the crow that was silent on his hand he placed it on his right shoulder gently as he did naturally I turned him down Itachi was surprised that Orochimaru would offer his help to Naruto but he wasn't surprised to know that the snake Sanin had some connections with Jubi this of course makes things a bit trickier if Orochimaru has begun to make his move you'll have to learn to control your other power if you're going to stand against your enemies and protect what is precious to you Naruto not at all head to Kumogakure after the UN conference I'm sure I can work something with the Reikage if he doesn't help I'll have to do it another way silence settled again before Naruto 
spoke Itachi Naruto's tone was rather soft are you sure this is alright a sad smile plastered across Itachi's face I've lived enough Naruto though I've yet to fully pay for my actions in the past my time has come everyone eventually dies in this world and that makes us humans if we cannot accept death then we will live in fear. For the rest of our lives worst case scenario we will seek immortality to rid of our mortality I've told you before you can't protect everyone and you can't solve. Everything you can't do anything to save me it isn't within your power to do so however you must adapt to that I couldn't protect Sasuke and Kanoha at the same time but I learned to live with my choice accept this and you'll grow up loved ones will die along the way but we can't give up nor can we blame ourselves for not being able to save them we just have to accept and move on carrying our dreams along with us death is part of the human cycle many die without seeing through their dreams but they always pass on that dream to someone else my dream was never to bring peace to the world but it has always been to protect Kanoha bringing peace is your dream and your desire to protect Kanoha isn't strong as mine but I hope that you never abandon Kanoha Naruto life has a beginning and end however if you want to die happily make your life worth living even if I die any from now on I know that you will protect Kanoha you will look after my little brother I believe you will use Shirsui's eyes for the best and perhaps if your own power isn't enough you can always use my power to protect what is important to both of us for these reasons it is okay silence reigned again and naruto stood up the crow on his shoulder didn't leave i'm going to see other matters his tone was really sad we'll talk more when i return later don't be sleeping i'll make your favorite dish naruto managed to smile before walking out of the room once he left the room he found kisame leaning against the wall within the passage hands folded across his chest well that was touching Kisame said I've never sensed so many emotions in Itachi's tone like that before Naruto didn't comment on those words would it be okay if you stayed around here for the time being Kisame nodded thank you Kanahi Bakura no Sato Tsunade's office Tsunade never thought that the sight of Naruto in her office would make her blood so much that she would want more than to tear him apart she loved him but the urge to hurt him was so strong she couldn't stop herself even if she wanted to as soon as Naruto appeared in her office she didn't wait to ask anything or study his expression anger just exploded within her what he'd done was giving her way more trouble than she could handle without him Naruto begging for mercy in the presence of Anoki the cruel thing was that even if he did beg for mercy Anoki wouldn't give it he would just cut him down painfully while savoring each cut the situation Naruto had brought was nothing short of stupidity and just playing outright dangerous the Godame Okage had never thought that she would have to deal with such things from Naruto perhaps if it was someone brainless as Sasuke then she would have expected such a thing but it was Naruto the person she'd chosen to be a representative of Kanoha within other villages her successor she'd elected him to sell the brand that was Kanoha but now he disappointed her this only made her even more curious as to what Naruto might have been doing during the three years he was supposed to be training with Jiraiya somehow Tsunade found herself putting some blame in Naruto's actions on the Toad Sage she told herself that if Jiraiya had been clever and ensured that Naruto didn't go away none of this would have happened she believed that whatever forced him to change was something he encountered during his three years away from Kanoha with Naruto appearing in her office in a flash of yellow Tsunade, furiously lunged at him with her right fist. Glowing with chakra in mere seconds the blonde Hokage had jumped her desk and was right in front of Naruto there was no surprise or shock evident on Naruto's face when the slug princess blurred into his front Tsunade's right fist brutally crashed into Naruto's chest with such alarming speed and power that the blonde was sent tumbling away towards the other wall behind him like bullet Naruto didn't do so much as flinch as Tsunade's fist shattered some of the bones forming his ribcage with a few broken things inside blood freely flowed out of his mouth Tsunade flashed right behind Naruto and caught him with his shoulders she twisted him around so that he could face her despite the blood leaking out of his mouth and pain he was feeling as well as Tsunade's demonic glare gazing down on him Naruto's mask didn't slip it was a mask of sadness that Tsunade had yet to define the blonde Hokage was even more furious because he didn't even try to dodge her punch nor was he displaying anything she wanted from him her left hand grabbed his neck tightly and she lifted him into the air strangling him yet Naruto made no sound Tsunade's frustrations grew to a peak at the action lack of rather she slammed her right fist straight at Naruto's chest again she was rewarded by sending Naruto crashing towards the wall behind her desk and out of her office in a blur another broken wall in Tsunade's office and the people weren't even alarmed when Naruto crashed outside the Hokage tower bleeding rather heavily one could say it was cold hearted to just walk past by someone who was lying on the ground with death seemingly dancing at his door but this was Lady Tsunade's doing as such people just walked away like they didn't see anything to try to involve yourself in such matters was only calling for trouble Tsunade certainly had no trouble in destroying anyone who disturbed her when she was letting out of her righteous fury when such things occurred regardless of who was at the receiving. 
end of it people avoided using the street and those who were within it quickly made haste away from it this is why after a minute the street of bleeding and broken Naruto was lying it was left empty the remaining Senju then flashed right next to Naruto she shook her head when she caught the fact that the street was deadly silent and empty almost like even if there were small markets in operation their owners had hid their stock and dug themselves down the ground to avoid her wrath Tsunade looked down at Naruto she was alarmed when she saw the crimson chakra covering his entire chest in a bubbling formation this could only mean the Kyuubi's chakra and her senses worn off the Godain quickly called her umbu to surround Naruto to restrain him if there should be the need five umbus stood by Naruto's sides watching the chakra play around his chest after a minute passed Tsunade realized that Naruto wasn't losing control losing control would unleash the power of the Kyuubi upon this village and the events that occurred years ago weren't something Tsunade was willing to witness she wasn't here when the Kyuubi attacked but she didn't want to see it happen the stories she heard were crippling enough the fifth Hokage looked at Naruto carefully despite a shattered ribcage and some unbearable pain Tsunade was sure he'd experienced he was still conscious what alarmed Tsunade the most was the sad look on Naruto's eyes Hokage-sama I think it is just healing him one of the umbu said after he'd studied what was going on if naruto was losing control then the kyuubi's chakra would be having much more malice that would be felt all over the village but there was only a small dose of it and the look on naruto's face wasn't of a man who'd lost control no it was the look of a sad man tsunade nodded having made that conclusion herself get me jiraiya and bring him to the hospital tsunade ordered she was sure that the sanin was aware of what was going on she'd smacked him when she'd read Naruto's letter and when Anoki sent her a letter she'd sort of blamed him for everything and had put him in the hospital because of it twice Hayokage-sama the umbu saluted before they all vanished leaving Tsunade alone in an empty street with Naruto she kneeled down at his side and tried to touch him but for the first time since returning Naruto spoke to her don't unless you wish to be burned then you're welcome to touch me the Kyuubi's chakra is quiet poisonous and lethal to anyone who isn't me or a Jinchuriki Tsunade was taken aback by the sadness in his tone despite speaking so calmly considering his condition his tone was still sad she'd never even seen the sad look on his eyes like that how am I supposed to get you to the hospital then Naruto didn't respond he remained quite much to Tsunade's annoyance another minute passed and the chakra around Naruto dispersed his bleeding stopped but he still didn't get up despite the chakra performing its Magic he wasn't fully healed and he was still feeling some pain I don't particularly like the hospital and would rather rest at my house than in one of those cold beds you don't really have a choice in the matter Tsunade said sternly her right hand found its way on Naruto's chest and both disappeared in a heap of green leaves hospital after stitching up Naruto and ensuring that there was no grave damage on any of his internal organs Tsunade released a breath of relief knowing that he was okay. She still covered his whole chest with a bandage as it was a procedure to be followed after sustaining injuries Tsunade sat beside Naruto's side the left side of the bed and looked at him carefully he wasn't looking directly at her his gaze was elsewhere I recommend that you don't do anything straining for the next week or so she said why didn't you dodge I could have seriously hurt you do you have a death wish or something her tone was now reaching the outside of the little room Tsunade still remember the day he returned quite well that day she'd lunged at him just like today but he didn't allow her to him he'd blocked and dodged her punch saying something about it she'd expected him to do the same even today but he didn't do anything the look on his face almost seemed like he really wanted her to hit him that the fifth couldn't understand I may have one Naruto responded quiet casually besides I have people after my head so many people already wish for my death I think it is better to die on your own terms than on someone's terms that was just disturbing to Tsunade that is she couldn't even tell if he was joking or not and the sad tone didn't even make her feel good at all while it was indeed true that there was a bounty for his head she didn't think he would say it so lightly are you okay Naruto Tsunade felt obliged to question before getting to serious matters yes Naruto replied calmly Tsunade nodded while she was still sorting her thoughts her former teammate appeared in a puff of smoke Jiraiya settled at the window looking outside rather than the people inside what were you thinking Naruto do you know what you've done our relationship Awagakure has reached a new low and I don't think I can protect you from this mess that you've created Tsunade's tone was deathly stern and her gaze was rather cold silence settled aren't you going to answer me Naruto impatience was the subject in the Godame's tone she was even close to shaking him so she could get him to respond she wasn't going to allow him to get off the hook without giving her straight answers last time she'd let things slide because there was no harm done Tsunade was willing to confine him in umbu cells if he wasn't going to talk she was really tired of his attitude she was going to make him understand that he was her subordinate and she was his master he wasn't supposed to do whatever he pleased he was supposed to do what she ordered him to do Jiraiya turned his gaze on to Naruto 
and shook his head he not thought that Naruto would do something so reckless that would put Kanoha in danger it was even more troubling since the granddaughter of the Tsuchikage was involved in the incident this whole mess was just one big problem the Sanin thought he wouldn't have to face to make things worse Anoki was demanding compensation for Naruto's actions or he would take the incident as a symbol of a war. While I'm happy that you were protecting Conan's village I still think she would have handled it herself and it was just stupid for you to engage them you really shouldn't have done it Naruto Jiraiya added shaking his head why Naruto Tsunade demanded again Naruto still didn't look at either of the Sanans he gaze went up to the toneless ceiling because I chose to and felt that it was right for me to do it I do not doubt that Conan could have handled it but I chose to do it what for what good would come of something so dangerous and reckless has the QB started to influence your actions that you'd choose to slaughter hundreds of men just for the sake if it Tsunade shouted she really couldn't believe that in his right mind Naruto could have done something like that there had to be something influencing him she'd even have Inoichi evaluate him if he wasn't saying anything concrete Naruto eyes fixed at Tsunade for a second before he looked back at the ceiling is it really hard for you to believe that I made a choice does it sound too unbelievable that you'd think that the vile bijou in me is the cause of all these there was no doubt that the beast in him was malicious however not everything that went wrong was caused by the bijou humans had their own minds and were vile creatures that were even despicable to the bijous they called demons when things went bad bijous were blamed humans never find fault in themselves it was no wonder bijous loathe humans what do you expect me to think it isn't like you to do something like that she didn't deny any of it Naruto shook his head sadly the QB doesn't influence anything I do the choice to face those people was mine and I don't believe there's any reason I can give you that will make you understand why don't you try us Naruto Jiraiya said sternly what could have been sufficient for you to risk Kanoha's safety like that isn't it every shinobi's of Kanoha duty to think what is best for this village Naruto pointed at his forehead there was no forehead protector to tell he was a shinobi of Kanoha both Sanans were quick to understand what are you saying Naruto Tsunade demanded in a low growl I gave up my forehead protector because not everything I do would be for Kanoha I do not go around wishing only what is best for this village when I made my choice to face those shinobi I wasn't thinking of Kanoha the world doesn't evolve around Kanoha and my dream is more than this village both Tsunade and Jiraiya were baffled by his response do you not care for this village Naruto I thought you wanted to become Okage Tsunade's tone was down I care for Kanoha perhaps not as much as both of you I've only suffered torment in this village and despite everything I've yet to be fully accepted by the villagers they see Jiraiya cut off Naruto before he could finish you just have to prove to them that you're a good person not the monster they thought you were if you make a little effort to show them your goodness everyone will smile at you the toad sage argued Jiraiya these people have yet to Recognize that what they have done to me was wrong what you're saying is no different than telling me to apologize while I've not done any wrong these people were wrong to what they did and I was right saying I wasn't a monster Naruto paused for a moment before continuing it would take me saving this village from complete destruction for them to call me hero quite honestly I have seen just how evil some people are in this village it wouldn't be the greatest thing to have this people call me a Hero silence reigned again you still haven't given me your reasons Naruto I need them before Danzo crawls out of his burrow to play his card Tsunade pressed to another matter it wasn't the place to tell them that Danzo was dead and telling them now would only complicate things further I was thinking of Conan my image and the UN what would happen to Kanoha because of my actions wasn't on my mind well you could say that I was being selfish that isn't the mindset of someone who is being prepared for being Hokage and certainly not the attitude and choice Minato would have taken if he was in your position Jiraiya muttered quietly for the first since Jiraiya appeared in the room Naruto looked at him must you always bring the Minato card Jiraiya's body stiffened under the cold stare Naruto was giving him I'm not Minato and will never be like him saying such things makes me question a lot of things Jiraiya if you wanted me to become like your prized student you should have taken your responsibilities as godfather seriously oh I forget you completely discarded them Naruto stated rather strongly damn it now I'm all worked up that wasn't necessary Naruto Tsunade sent a chilling glare at the blonde Jinchuriki then stopped comparing me to Minato my father is dead and he died a hero to his beloved village I'm not his replacement or anything Naruto said shaking his head it really irritates me when you say stuff like your father would be disappointed if he didn't want to be disappointed then he shouldn't have died and left me alone to face what I faced or at least he should have chosen someone to take care of me saving the village was his priority and he did leave your care to Jiraiya Tsunade quickly realized that those weren't the wise words to say especially since her former teammate abandoned Naruto well anyway the council has decided to remove you from your position you are also suspended from doing any shinobi activities and you're also forbidden from leaving the village until this matter is settled 
staying locked inside the village isn't something I can do but I will happily leave my duties per your orders Naruto responded calmly it wasn't a request Naruto staying in here is also for your own good have you already forgotten that there are people after your life I've not forgotten but I still won't be confined in the village he had things to do the UNA conference was only pushed further by four days given all that has been happening and some members had said they wanted more time he needed time to prepare if you disobey you'll be charged with insubordination and I might even have your chakra sealed Tsunade threatened Naruto was silent for a few moments I'll risk it and I'm truly sorry for it but I can't do what you wish of me Naruto stated apologetically don't even think about it Naruto Tsunade shouted but Naruto didn't listen to her he disappeared in a flash of yellow go after him Jiraiya the go dame ordered calm down Heim the toad sage started calmly he could have gone to use Akiri or even the snow country he could really be anywhere and I can't find him just like that summon the toads they'll tell you where he is don't you understand the seriousness of this matter Jiraiya I understand Jiraiya said with a nod however just like last time they won't tell me not unless I trick Gamachiki but doing something like that was a great sin one he wasn't willing to commit wind capital finally Miyuki had been able to get some people to help her out in managing the country people she trusted she wasn't thrilled about the idea of hiring people who she couldn't trust and working with them would always bring much concern in her but if she was working with people she trusted she could count on them to do their job and never disappoint her then again the people you trusted the most are most likely to be the ones to hurt you the world was just cruel and that way she'd give you friends to be happy with and then she'd make them hurt you so much that you want nothing to be crushed them or just make them disappear from your sight and never appear again perhaps fate was just one sadistic whore who got off in people's miseries it wouldn't be much of a surprise if that were revealed to be true there were so many people who suffered and some were just innocent people who knew nothing Miyuki had often heard that there was a saying in the shinobi world amongst shinobi there were no innocents she didn't know how true that was but amongst them civilians there were truly honest people who didn't deserve what the world brought to their lives, but it was life Miyuki shook her head trying to dispel the thoughts that were mercilessly attacking her from all sides she feared if she continued to think like this that whore called fate would try to put on some misery upon her life and she didn't want to deal with any of that the wind lord stopped walking when she'd reached her sitting room the first thing she saw was blonde hair and she quickly recognized that it was Naruto he was the only person with blonde hair who could break into her living quarters at this time of the day he'd rushed off this morning saying that there were some things that he needed to handle it was already evening now so she guessed he'd solved everything already Miyuki continued with her steps she walked over to the couch and sat down next to him on his right everything well handled I presume she said smiling Naruto nodded yes but more problems have piled up that it bothers me he said well things weren't exactly handled smoothly but it was handled nonetheless Danzo was no more so there was no need to fear him doing anything since the problem disappeared along with his existence problems with Kanoha had risen to such a level Naruto hadn't thought they would reach it was very worrying and would become problematic if it wasn't handled smoothly however Naruto wasn't going to step into the village anytime soon well he would have to go there to take some things from his house but he wouldn't reveal his presence to anyone you have been dealing with a lot lately Miyuki said looking and thought yes if it was not sadness strapping him between her fat thighs it was him trying to solve some matters that were troubling a lot was truly piled onto his life and Naruto didn't help himself by thinking of them too often Naruto nodded a bit sadly I've also been putting some pressure on you and it is quite inconsiderate of me you also have your own problems but I've been selfishly putting my burdens on your shoulders as it seems whenever he had problems he always came here to seek some comfort from the woman he couldn't deny that her presence was warm and comforting and that he enjoyed it but she also had a country to lead she had her own problems to solve it was always about him and his problems Naruto didn't want for it to be like that anymore it is quiet all right Naruto Miyuki said calmly there more I spend time with you there more I realize that my problems are nothing compared to yours besides you've had it rough for too long without anyone so it is okay Naruto shook his head I will accept that everyone has problems and others are way bigger than others however I cannot compare my problems to you Miyuki I'm a shinobi and you're a normal human a civilian you cannot weigh my problems because they aren't made for you what you have is enough for you the blonde explained lightly for now let us not talk about any problems are you sure Naruto nodded you already know my dreams and many more things about me tell me more about you I've learned quite a lot since we first met but I still don't know what your dream is in this world this would help him temporarily forget about other things that were gathering around his head he'd said he would return to Itachi later on but he wasn't going to do that he couldn't deal with that now not after everything things at Kanoha had just spiraled out of control he had not thought it would turn out like that knowing Itachi's 
wish for him to protect Kanoa it wouldn't be easy for him to deal Shirsui as I was also given to him for Kanoa's protection nothing else he had dreams but Itachi had said the owner of the eye had trusted it to him for Kanoa's safety and he wasn't going to use it for anything other than Kanoa's safety Naruto shook his ridding of such thoughts he looked at Miyuki as she was busy thinking her eyes then fixed with his own, neither broke away from the eye contact before the wind lord blinked and spoke I want to make this country a safe home to its people and make sure that no women are abducted then sold to slavery I wish for this country to be also prosperous under my rule in the previous years the wind hasn't done well compared to the other great countries the fire cloud water and earth all have strong villages within them Sunagakir has always been the weakest amongst the great five my father's choice to cut off funding to Suna further diminish the country's fortunes I want to Make this country great I want Sunagakir to rise be in equal terms with other great villages if that becomes a reality my own position will be the strengthened and this country will thrive Naruto kept quiet as he absorbed all that Miyuki had said he smiled this might work well for him it is going to take a lot for Sunagakir to surpass the likes of Kumogakir IWA and Kanoa the Mist has suffered greatly because of the civil war that saw many of its strong perished so it isn't as fearsome as it was Miyuki nodded I'm not even sure if we can surpass any of those villages I'm not even a shinobi to begin with and Gara is still learning so am I right now we are focused to rebuilding strengthening the village will be another task that seems to be further away from my grasp even so I feel that I can reach it both Kumo and IWA possess highly strong Jinchurikis to be quite honest as a Jinchuriki I wouldn't fare any better to the four they know how to control the power sealed in them while I no little the Jinchuriki only make the villages strong Suna only has a Jinchuriki who is by no means alas the Bijou they have is the weakest it is not a problem though I believe that Bijus are not all that tips the balance of power with or without a Bijou humans can become powerful Kanoa hasn't actually used its Jinchurikis as weapons but it has always remained the strongest of the great five hidden villages it is possible for Suna to surpass even the likes of Kumo who have what they call perfect Jinchurikis Naruto stated like he'd been thinking of this for a long time it actually surprised Miyuki that he could say so much about this matter given that she'd only told him just now it suddenly feels like this is your dream not mine Miyuki remarked lightly with a warm smile Naruto returned the smile before responding you know my dream is to bring peace into the shinobi world for that to happen there are certain terms that must be met what do you mean by that although I was born in Kanoha and my parents died protecting it Kanoha is rotten many of its past actions have been unjust although Tsunade tries her best to make it clean it is still not enough when you have held the belt of champion too long you become arrogant at a certain point and start believing that you're unbeatable with that the voice becomes even louder and you start to feel like a king when that happens you tend to like hearing the sound of your own voice the UN isn't formed by strong villages only there are weak villages who can't even be put on the same ring as the great villages imagine a small village proposes an idea and a strong village like Kanoha doesn't like it who do you think will win in his simple strong villages get what they want if IWA and Kumo were to become members the shift of things would turn to their favor although I set up the UN in a way that makes all equal and only I and the chairwoman with enough power to stop any unfairness from happening I can't always stop everything if Kanoha does something that it isn't supposed to do something that isn't aligning with the laws of the UN who will punish it if it is the strongest bull in the ring I can't go against the village by myself however if someone stronger than Kanoha steps into the ring and holds a whipping stick Kanoha will do what it is required of it because another strong man has entered this strong man in reality will have to be both Kiri and Suna it will take many years to make Sunagakir equal in power with others however if I can combine Kiri Suna as well as Amagakir and Make them one they will stand high above all other great villages I trust in May's kindness and Gara's sense of right and wrong stick by what is good a few moments of silence passed you said a lot of words Miyuki said but I understand what you're saying however the trick would be making the villages stand in the same line Naruto merely smiled in response I know Gara and May will like each other he simply said you sound confident Miyuki said this really seemed to be working well to uplift his spirits he really seemed more down than usual a few minutes ago so my dream is a possibility you can make it happen no not I alone you may Gara and Conan will make everything a reality Naruto responded but it does seem like your dream is going to be a reality soon and with that you'll be at peace since you've achieved what you desire his dream was still blurry the plan to challenge IWA Kumo and Kanoha may backfire if either Suna or IWA become stronger the strongest will feel intimidated and 
they'll see it as a challenge in order to affirm the position as the strongest a war is most likely to break out it would be catastrophic and a failure for his part if something like that happened Miyuki shook her head in response to Naruto's words while well, I have another dream without achieving it I'll never be at peace even if the wind country does become prosperous what is it love Miyuki said I want to experience love and have a family of my own it is a bit lonely to be without someone to love in such a way that it hurts I haven't had many experiences with men and my current position doesn't offer many opportunities to meet nice men I haven't been able to meet anyone nice and if things continue like this I might even get to my 30s still being single she looked quite horrified by the thought I'm honest wounded Naruto said a bit in amusement aren't I a nice person and I happen to like you for you to discard me as lover is quite hurtful it hurts so much I just want to go to my room and cry the blonde gave a mock hurt look face and actually stood up like he wanted to leave Miyuki grabbed his right hand halting his movements do you really like me I mean we've hanging out for some time now but you've never shown any intent her eyes were staring deep into his Naruto merely smiled in response he didn't think saying yes was the right response and so he settled for smiling Miyuki stood up and became level with him a few inches separated them don't freak out okay Naruto still Remained quiet eternal seconds passed as the distance between their lips disappeared their lips just touched softly as each of their breaths washed over the other the desire was there the urge to hungrily devour those soft looking lips was there yet Naruto caged it down for a second that is finally the urge became too much for both and their lips danced a bit slowly their first real kiss Naruto savored the smoothness of Miyuki's lips as his own rubbed slowly against hers her lips felt deliciously smooth fueling the fire in him her breath gave off a certain scent that was just intoxicating to his senses he wanted nothing more than to hold her closer and continue with it unfortunately it wasn't to be Miyuki pulled away the kiss only lasted for a few seconds Miyuki smiled at him well that was just wonderful she said happily this wasn't the first time Naruto had kissed a woman before but it felt like it was first her felt needing more of it like he wasn't quite satisfied with a few seconds the feeling was alien to his body and his mind was able to define it quite perfectly, 